Let fame that all hunt after in their lives live registered upon our brazen tombs and then grace us in the disgrace of death when spite of cormorant devouring time, the endeavor of this present breath may buy that honor which shall bait his scythe's keen edge and make us heirs of all eternity. Navarre shall be the wonder of the world. Our court shall be a little academe, still and contemplative in living art. You three, Barone, Dumain, and Longueville, have sworn for three years' term to live with me, my fellow scholars, and to keep those statutes that are recorded in this schedule here. Your oaths are passed, and now subscribe your names, that his own hand may strike his honor down that violates the smallest branch herein. If you are armed to do as sworn to do, subscribe to your deep oaths and keep it too. Well, I am resolved. Oh, tis but a three years' fast. The mind shall banquet, though the body pine. Fat paunches have lean pates, and dainty bits make rich the ribs, but bankrupt quite the wit. My loving lord, Dumaine is mortified. The grosser manner of these world's delights he throws upon the gross world's baser slaves. To love, to wealth, to pomp, I pine and die. With all these living in philosophy. I can but say their protestation over, so much, dear liege, I have already sworn, that is, to live and study here three years. But there are other strict observances, as not to see a woman in that term, which I hope well is not enrolled there, and one day in a week to touch no food, and but one meal on every day beside, which I hope is not enrolled there and then to sleep but three hours in the night, and not be seen to wink of all the day, when I was wont to think no harm all night, and make a dark night too of half the day, which I hope well is not enrolled there. Oh, these are barren tasks, too hard to keep, not to see ladies study fast, not sleep. Your oath is past to pass away from thee. Let me say no, my liege, and if you please, I only swore to study with your grace and stay here in your court for three years' space. You swore to that, Barone, and to the rest. By yea and nay, sir, then I swore in jest. What is the end of study? Let me know. Why, that to know which else we should not know. Things hid and barred, you mean, from common sense? Aye, that is study's godlike recompense. Come on, then, I will swear to study so, to know the thing I am forbid to know, as thus, to study where I well may dine, when I to feast expressly am forbid, or study where to meet some mistress fine, when mistresses from common sense are hid. Or having sworn too hard a keeping oath, study to break it and not break my troth. These be the stops that hinder study quite and train our intellects to vain delight. Why, all delights are vain, but that most vain which with pain purchased doth inherit pain, as painfully to pore upon a book to seek the light of truth, while truth the while doth falsely blind the eyesight of his look. Light seeking light doth light of light beguile. So ere you find where light in darkness lies, your light grows dark by losing of your eyes. Study is like the heaven's glorious sun that will not be deep searched with saucy looks. Small have continual plodders ever won save base authority from others' books. These earthly godfathers of heaven's lights that give a name to every fixed star have no more profit of their shining nights than those that walk and what not what they are. Too much to know is to know naught but fame, and every godfather can give a name. How well he's read to reason against reading. Proceeded well to stop all good proceedings. He weeds the corn and still lets grow the weeding. The spring is near when green geese are a-breeding. How follows that? Fit in his place and time. In reason, nothing. Something then in rhyme. Barone is like an envious sneeping frost that bites the first-born infants of the spring. Well, say I am. Why should proud summer boast before the birds have any cause to sing? Why should I joy in an abortive birth? At Christmas, I no more desire a rose than wish a snow in May's newfangled shows, but like of each thing that in season grows. So you to study now, it is too late. Climb o'er the house to unlock the little gate. Well, sit you out. Go home, Barone, and you. No, my good lord. 
I have sworn to stay with you. Give me the paper, let me read the same, and to the strictest decrees, I'll write my name. How well this yielding rescued thee from shame. Item, that no woman shall come within a mile of my court. Hath this been proclaimed? Four days ago. Let's see the penalty. On pain of losing her tongue, who devised this penalty? To marry, that did I. Sweet Lord, and why? Oh, to fright them hence with that dread penalty. A dangerous law against gentility. Item. If any man be seen to talk with a woman within the term of three years, he shall endure such public shame as the rest of the court can possibly devise. This article, my liege, yourself must break. For well you know, here comes in embassy the French king's daughter with yourself to speak. A maid of grace and complete majesty about surrender up of Aquitaine to her decrepit sick and bedrid father. Therefore, this article is made in vain, or vainly comes the admired princess hither. What say you, Lord? Why, this is quite forgot. So study evermore is overshot. While it doth study to have what it would, it doth forget to do the thing it should. And when it hath the thing it hunteth most, tis one as towns with fire, so one, so lost. We must, of course, dispense with this decree. She must lie here on mere necessity. Necessity will make us all forsworn three thousand times within this three years' space. For every man with his effects is born, not by might mastered, but by special grace. If I break faith, this word shall speak for me. I am forsworn on mere necessity. So to the laws at large I write my name, and he that breaks them in the least degree stands in attainder of eternal shame. Suggestions are to other as to me, but I believe, although I seem so loath, I am the last that will last keep his oath. Is there no quick recreation granted? Aye, that there is. Our court, you know, is haunted with a refined traveller of Spain, a man in all the world's new fashion planted that hath a mint of phrases in his brain. This child of fancy that Armado hight, for interim to our studies, shall relate in high-born words the worth of many a knight from tawny Spain lost in the world's debate. How you delight, my lords, I know not I, but I protest I love to hear him laugh. And I will use him for my minstrelsy. Armado is a most illustrious wight, a man of fire new words, fashion's own knight. For Costard the swain, and he shall be our sport. And so to study three years is but short. Which is the Duke's own person? This fellow, what words? I myself reprehend his own person, for I am his grace's harbour. But I would see his own person in flesh and blood. This is he. Now, uh, Signor Arma, uh, Arma uh, commends you. There's villainy abroad. This letter will tell you more. Sir, the contents thereof are as touching me. A letter from the magnificent Armado. How low so hath the matter. I hope in God for high words. Oh, I hope for a low heaven. God grant us patience. To hear or forbear hearing. Oh, to hear meekly, sir, and to laugh moderately, or to forbear both. <laughs> Well, sir, be it as the style shall give us cause to climb in the merriness. <laughs> the matter is to me, sir, as concerning Jacquinetta. The manner of it is, I was taken with the manner. In what manner? In manner and form following, sir. All those three. I was seen with her in the manor house, sitting with her upon the form, and taken following her into the park, which put together <laughs> is in manner and form following. <laughs> now, sir, for the manner. It is the manner of a man to speak to a woman. For the form. <laughs> in some form. For the following, sir. <laughs> as it shall follow in my correction, and God defend the right. Will you hear this letter with attention? As we would hear an oracle. Such is the simplicity of man to hearken after the flesh. Great deputy, the Welkin's vicegerent and sole dominator of Navarre, my soul's earth's god and body's fostering <laughs> patron. <laughs> Not a word of Custard yet. So it is. It may be so, but if he say it is so, he is in telling true, but so. Peace. Be to me and every man that dares not fight. No words. Oh, for the men's secrets, I beseech you. So it is. <laughs> Besieged with sable-coloured melancholy, I did commend the black-oppressing humour to the most wholesome physic of thy health-giving air, and as I am a gentleman, betook myself to walk. The time when, 
about the sixth hour when beasts most graze, birds best peck, and men sit down to that <laughs> nourishment which is called supper. So much of the time when. Now for the ground, which, which I mean, I walked upon. It is eclept thy park. Then for the place where, where I mean, I did encounter that obscene and most preposterous event that draweth from my snow-white pen the ebon-coloured ink which here thou viewest, beholdest, surveyest, or seest. But to the place where it standeth north-north-east and by-east from the west corner of thy curious knotted garden, there did I see that low-spirited swain, that base minnow of thy mirth, Nay. That unlettered, small-knowing soul. Nay. That shallow vassal. Still me. Which, as I remember, height costard. Oh, me. Sorted and consorted, contrary to thy established, proclaimed edict and continent canon, which with, oh, with, but with this I passion to say wherewith. <laughs> with, a oh, with. With a child of our grandmother Eve, a female, or for thy more sweet understanding, a woman. <laughs> Him I, as my ever esteemed duty pricks me on, have sent to thee to receive the meed of punishment by thy sweet graces officer, Anthony Dull, a man of good repute, carriage, bearing, and estimation. Me, and shall please you, I am Anthony Dull. For Jacquinetta, so is the weaker vessel called, which I apprehended with the aforesaid swain, I keep her as a vessel of thy law's fury, and shall at the least of thy sweet notice bring her to trial. Thine, in all compliments of devoted and heart-burning heat of duty, <laughs> Don Adriano de Armado. This is not so well as I looked for, but the best that ever I heard. Aye, the best for the worst. But, sirrah, what say you to this? Sir... I confess the wench. Did you hear the proclamation? I do confess much of the hearing it, but little of the marking of it. It was proclaimed a year's imprisonment to be taken with a wench. Yeah, I was taken with none, sir. I was taken with a damsel. Well, it was proclaimed, damsel. Uh, this was no damsel, neither, sir. She was a virgin. It is so very too, for it was proclaimed virgin. If it were, I deny her virginity. I was taken with a maid. This maid will not serve your turn, sir. This maid will serve my turn, sir. <laughs> sir, I will pronounce your sentence. You shall fast a week with bran and water. Oh, I'd rather pray a month with mutton and porridge. <laughs> and Don Armado shall be your keeper. My Lord Barone seem delivered o'er. And go we, lords, to put in practice that which each to other hath so strongly sworn. I lay my head to any good man's hat. These oaths and laws will prove an idle scorn. Sarah, come on. I suffer for the truth, sir. For true it is, I was taken with Jacquinetta. And Jacquinetta is a true girl. And therefore, welcome the sour cup of prosperity. Affliction may one day smile again. Until then, sit thee down, sorrow. Boy, what sign is it when a man of great spirit grows melancholy? A great sign, sir. But you look sad. Why, sadness is one and the self-same thing, dear Imp. No, no. Oh, Lord, sir, no. How canst thou part sadness and melancholy, my tender juvenile? By a familiar demonstration of the working, my tough senior. Why tough senior? Why tough senior? Why tender juvenile? Why tender juvenile? I spoke it tender juvenile as a congruent epithetum appertaining to thy young days, which we may nominate tender. And I, tough senior, as an appurtenant title to your old time, which we may name tough. Pretty and apt. How mean you, sir? I pretty and my saying apt, or I act and my saying pretty? Thou pretty, because little. Little pretty, because little. Wherefore apt? And therefore apt, because quick. Speak you this in my praise, master. In thy condign praise. I will praise an eel with the same praise. What, that an eel is ingenious? That an eel is quick. I do say thou art quick in answers. Thou heat's my blood. I am answered, sir. I love not to be crossed. He speaks to me contrary. Crosses love not him. I have promised to study three years with the Duke. You? 
may do it in an hour, sir. Impossible. How many at once were I told? I am ill at reckoning. It fitteth the spirit of a tapster. You are a gentleman and a gamester, sir. I confess both. They are both the varnish of the complete man. Then I am sure you know how much of the gross sum of due sace amounts to. It doth amount to one more than two. Which the base vulgar do call three? Two. Why, sir, is this such a piece of study? Now here is three studded, air yield thrice wink. And how easy it is to put years to the word three and study three years in two words. The dancing horse will tell you. A most fine figure. To prove you a cipher. I will hereupon confess I am in love. And as it is base for a soldier to love, so am I in love with the base wench. If drawing my sword against the humor of affection could deliver me from the reprobate thought of it, I would take desire prisoner and ransom him to any French courtier for a new devised courtesy. I think scorn to sigh. Methinks I should outswear Cupid. Comfort me, boy. What great men have been in love. Hercules, master. Most sweet Hercules. Uh, more authority, dear boy. Name more. And sweet, my child. Let them be men of good repute and carriage. Samson, master. He was a man of good carriage, great carriage. For he carried the town gates on his back like a porter. And he was in love. Oh, well-knit Samson. Strong-jointed Samson. I do excel thee in my rapier as much as thou didst me in carrying gates. I am in love, too. Who was Samson's love, my dear Mott? A woman, master. Of what complexion? Of all the four, or the three, or, or the two, or the one of the four. Tell me precisely of what complexion. Of the three water green, sir. Is that one of the four complexions? As I have read, sir, and the best of them, too. Green, indeed, is the colour of lovers, but... To have a love of that colour, methinks Samson had small reason for it. He surely affected her for her wit. It was so, sir, for she had a green wit. My love is most immaculate white and red. Most immaculate thoughts, master, are masked under such colours. Define, define, well-educated infant. My father's wicked, my mother's tongue assist me. Sweet invocation of a child, most pretty and pathetical. dangerous rhyme, master, against the reason of white and red. Is there not a ballad, boy, of the king and the beggar? The world was very guilty of such a ballad some three ages since, but I think now it is not to be found. Or if it were, it would neither serve for the writing nor the tune. I will have that subject newly writ or that I may example my digression by some mighty precedent, boy. I do love that country girl that I took in the park with a rational hind, Costard. <laughs> she deserves well. To be whipped, and yet a better love than my master. Sing, boy. My spirit grows heavy in love. And that's great marvel, love in the light wind. I say sing, sir. Forbear till this company be passed. Sir, the, the Duke's pleasure is that you keep Costard safe. And you must suffer him to take no delight nor no penance, but a must fast three days a week. Uh. For this damsel, I must keep her at the park. She is allowed for the day woman. Fare ye well. I do betray myself with blushing. Maid. Man. I will visit thee at the lodge. That's hereby. I know where it is situate. <laughs> Lord, how wise you are. <laughs> I will tell thee wonders. With that face? I love thee. So I heard you say. And so, farewell. Fair weather after you. Come, Jacquinetta, away. <coughs> Villain, thou shalt fast for thy offences ere thou be pardoned. Well, sir, I hope when I do it, I shall do it on a full stomach. Thou shalt be heavily punished. I am more bound to you than your fellows, for they are but lightly rewarded. Take this villain away. Shut him up. 
Come, you transgressing slave, away! Let me not be pent up, sir. I will fast, being loose. No, sir, that were fast and loose. Thou shalt to prison. Well, if ever I do see the merry days of desolation that I have seen, some shall see. What shall some see? Nay, nothing, Master Moth, but what they look upon. It is not for prisoners to be too silent in their words, and therefore I will say nothing. I thank God I have as little patience as another man, and therefore I can be quiet. Ah, ah. I do affect the very ground, which is base, where her shoe, which is baser, guided by her foot, which is basest, to tread. I shall be forsworn, which is a very great argument of falsehood, if I love. And how can that be true love, which is falsely attempted? Love is a familiar, love is a devil. There is no evil angel but love. Yet was Samson so tempted, and he had an excellent strength. Yet was Solomon so seduced, and he had a very good wit. Cupid's butt shaft is too hard for Hercules' club, and therefore too much odds for a Spaniard's rapier. The first and second cause will not serve my turn. The passado he respects not. The duello he regards not. His disgrace is to be called boy, but his glory is to subdue men. Adieu, valor, rust, rapier, be still, drum. For your manager is in love, yea, he loveth. Assist me, some extemporal god of rhyme, for I'm sure I shall turn sonnet. Devise wit, write pen, for I am for whole volumes in folio. Madam, summon up your dearest spirits. Consider who the king your father sends, to whom he sends, and what's his embassy. Yourself, held precious in the world's esteem, to parley with the sole inheritor of all perfections that a man may owe, matchless Navarre. The plea of no less weight than Aquitaine, a dowry for a queen. Be now as prodigal of all dear grace as nature was in making graces dear when she did starve the general world beside and prodigally gave them all to you. A good Lord Boyart, my beauty, though but me, need not the painted flourish of your praise. Uh -huh. Beauty is bought by judgment of the eye, not uttered by base sale of Chapman's tongues. I am less proud to hear you tell my worth than you much willing to be counted wise in spending your wit in the praise of mine. But now, to task the tasker. A good boy, it. You are not ignorant, all telling fame doth noise abroad, Navarre hath made a vow. Till painful study shall outwear three years, no woman may approach his silent court. Therefore to us, seemeth it a needful course before we enter his forbidden gates, to know his pleasure. And in that behalf, bold of your worthiness, we single you as our best moving fair solicitor. Tell him the daughter of the King of France, on serious business, craving quick dispatch, importunes personal conference with his grace. Haste, signify so much while we attend, like humble-visaged suitors his high will. Proud of employment, willingly I go. All pride is willing pride, and yours is so. Who are the votaries, my loving lords, that are vow fellows with this virtuous duke? Lord Longueville is one. Know you the man? I know him, madam. At a marriage feast between Lord Perigord and the beauteous heir of Jaquis Falconbridge, solemnized in Normandy, saw I this Longerville. A man of sovereign parts he is esteemed, well fitted in arts, glorious in arms. Nothing becomes him ill that he would well. The only soil of his fair virtue's gloss, if virtue's gloss will stain with any soil, is a sharp wit matched with too blunt a will, whose edge hath power to cut. Whose will still wills it should none spare that come within his power. Some merry mocking lord belike, is so? They say so most that most his humours know. Such short lived wits do wither as they grow. Mm. Who are the rest? The young Dumaine, a well accomplished youth of all that virtue loved for virtue loved, most power to do most harm, least knowing ill. 
For he hath wit to make an ill shape good, and shape to win grace, though he had no wit. <laughs> I saw him at the Duke Alonso's once, and much too little of that good I saw is my report to his great worthiness. Another of these students at that time was there with him, if I have heard a truth. Barone, they call him, but a merrier man, within the limit of becoming mirth, I never spent an hour's talk with all. <laughs> his eye begets occasion for his wit, for every object that the one doth catch, the other turns to a mirth-moving jest, which his fair tongue, conceits expositor, delivers in such apt and gracious words that aged ears play truant at his tales, and younger hearings are quite ravished, so sweet and voluble is his discourse. God bless my ladies. Are they all in love that oh. everyone her own hath garnished with such bedecking ornaments of praise? Here comes Boyette. Now what admittance, Lord? The bar had notice of your fair approach. And he and his competitors in oath were all addressed to meet you, gentle lady, before I came. Uh, Mary, thus much I have learned. He rather means to lodge you in the field, oh. like one that comes here to besiege his court, than seek a dispensation for his oath to let you enter his unpeopled house. Oh, here comes Navarre. Fair princess, welcome to the court of Navarre. Fair, I give you back again, and welcome I have not yet. The roof of this court is too high to be yours, and welcome to the wide fields too base to be mine. You shall be welcome, madam, to my court. I will be welcome then. Conduct me thither. Hear me, dear lady. I have sworn an oath. Our lady, help my lord, he'll be forsworn. <laughs> not for the world, fair madam, by my will. Why, will shall break it, will, and nothing else. Your ladyship is ignorant what it is. Were my lord so, his ignorance were wise, where now his knowledge must prove ignorance. I hear your grace hath sworn out housekeeping. Tis deadly sin to keep that oath, my lord, and sin to break it. Oh, but pardon me, I am too sudden bold. To teach a teacher ill beseemeth me. Vouchsafe to read the purpose of my coming and suddenly resolve me in my suit. Madam, I will, if suddenly I may. You will the sooner that I were away, for you'll prove perjured if you make me stay. Did not I dance with you in Brabant once? Did not I dance with you in Brabant once? I know you did. How needless was it then to ask the question? You must not be so quick. Tis long of you that spur me with such questions. Your wit's too hot, it speeds too fast, it will tire. Not till it leave the rider in the mire. What time of day? The hour the fool should ask. Now fair befall your mask. Fair fall the face it covers. And send you many lovers. Amen, so you be none. Nay, then will I be gone. Madam, your father here doth intimate the payment of a hundred thousand crowns, being but the one half of an entire sum dispersed by my father in his wars. But say that he, or we, as neither have received that sum, yet there remains unpaid a hundred thousand more, in surety of the which one part of Aquitaine is bound to us, although not valued to the money's worth. If then the king your father will restore, but that one half of which is unsatisfied, we will give up our right in Aquitaine and hold fair friendship with his majesty. Dear princess, were not his request so far from reason's yielding, your fair self should make a yielding against some reason in my breast and go well satisfied to France again. You do the king my father too much wrong and wrong the reputation of your name in so unseeming to confess receipt of that which hath so faithfully been paid. I do protest I never heard of it. And if you prove it, I'll repay it back or yield up Aquitaine. We arrest your word. Uh, Boyet, you can produce acquittances for such a sum from special officers of Charles, his father. Satisfy me, so. Uh, so please, Your Grace, the packet is not come where that and other specialties are bound. Uh, tomorrow you shall have a sight of them. It shall suffice me, at which interview all liberal reason I will yield unto. Meantime, receive such welcome at my hand as honour without breach of honour may make tender of to thy true worthiness. You may not come, fair princess, within my gates, but here without you shall be so received as you shall deem yourself lodged in my heart, though so denied fair harbour in my house. Your own good thoughts excuse me and farewell. Tomorrow shall we visit you again. Sweet health and fair desires consort, Your Grace. Thy own wish, wish I thee in every place. Lady, I will commend you to mine own heart. Pray you, 
you do my commendations. I will be glad to see it. And would you heard it groan? Is the fool sick? Sick at the heart. Alack, let it blood. Would that do it good? My physic says I. Will you prick it with your eye? No point. With my knife. Now, oh, God save thy life. And yours from long living. I cannot stay Thanksgiving. Sir, I pray your word. What lady is that same? The heir of Alençon. Catherine, her name. A gallant lady. Monsieur, fare you well. I beseech you a word. What is she in the white? A woman sometimes. And you saw her in the light. Perchance light in the light. I desire her name. Oh, she hath but one for herself. To desire that were a shame. Uh, pray you, sir, whose daughter? Her mother's, I have heard. Oh, God's blessing on your beard. Oh, good sir, be not offended. She is an heir of Falconbridge. Oh, nay, my collar is ended. She is a most sweet lady. Uh, not unlike, sir. That may be. What's her name in the camp? Rosaline, by good hap. Is she wedded or no? To her will, sir, or so. Oh, you are welcome. Sir, adieu. Farewell to me, sir, and welcome to you. That last is Baron, the merry madcap lord. Not a word with him but a jest. And every jest but a word. It was well done of you to take him at his word. I was as willing to grapple as he was to board. Two hot sheeps marry. <laughs> and wherefore not ships? No sheep, sweet lamb, unless we feed on your lips. You sheep and I pasture. Shall I finish the jest? <laughs> so you grant pasture for me? Not so, gentle beast. My lips are no common, though several they be. Belonging to who? To my fortunes and me. Good wits will be jangling. <laughs> but gentles, agree. This civil war of wits were much better used on Navarre and his bookmen. For here it is abused. It's my observation, which very seldom lies, by the heart still rhetoric disclosed with eyes, deceive me not now. Navar is infected. With what? With that which we lovers entitle affected. Your reason? Why? All his behaviors did make their retire to the court of his eye, peeping thorough desire. His face, his own margins, did quote such amazes that all eyes saw his eyes enchanted with gazes. I'll give you Aquitaine and all that is his, and you give him for my sake but one loving kiss. Come to our pavilion, boy at his disposed. But to <laughs> speak that in words which his eye hath disclosed. I only have made a mouth of his eye by adding a tongue which I know will not lie. Thou art an old love monger and speaks skillfully. <laughs> He's Cupid's grandfather and learns news of him. <laughs> then was Venus like her mother, for her father is but good. <laughs> <laughs> do you hear my mad wenches? No. What then do you see? I, our way to be gone. <laughs> <laughs> you are too hard for me. Warble, child, make passionate my sense of hearing. Horn, Colonel. of years, take uh, this key, give enlargement to the swain, bring him festinately hither. I must employ him in a letter to my love. Master, will you win your love with a French brawl? What meanest thou, brawling in French? No, my complete master, but don't you go for tune at the tongue's end, canary to it with your feet, humour it with turning up your eyelids. 
Sigh a note and sing a note, sometimes through the throat. Ooh, as if you swallowed love with singing love, sometimes through the nose. As if you snuffed up love by smelling love, with your hat penthouse like all the shop of your eyes. With your arms crossed on your thin belly doublet like a rabbit on a spit. With your hands in your pocket like a man after the old painting. And keep not too long in one tune, but a snip and away. These are compliments. These are humours. These betray nice wenches. That would be betrayed without these. And make them men of note. Do you note men? That most are affected to these. How hast thou purchased this experience? By my penny of observation. But, oh, but, oh. The hobby horse is forgot. Callst thou my love hobby horse? No, master. The hobby horse is but a colt. And your love, perhaps, a hackney. But have you forgot your love? Almost a head. Negligent student. Learn her by heart. By heart and in heart, boy. And out of heart, master. All those three I will prove. What wilt thou prove? A man if I live. And this, by, in, and without upon the instant, by heart you love her, because your heart cannot come by her. In heart you love her, because your heart is in love with her. And out of heart you love her, being out of heart that you cannot enjoy her. I am all these three. And three times as much more, and yet nothing at all. You fetch hither this way. <laughs> he must carry me a letter. A message well sympathised. A horse to be ambassador for an ass. Uh -huh. What say, so? Marry, sir, you must send the ass upon the horse, for he is very slow-gated, but I go. The way is but short, away. As swift as lead, sir. The meaning, pretty ingenious, is not lead a metal heavy, dull, and slow? Minnie may, honest master, or rather master, no. I say lead is slow. You are too swift, sir, to say so. Is that lead slow which is fired from a gun? Sweet smoke of rhetoric. He reputes me a cannon, and the bullet that's he. I shoot thee at the swain. Stop then, and I flee! A most acute juvenile, voluble and free of grace. By thy favor, sweet welkin, I must sigh in thy face. Most rude melancholy, valor gives thee place. My herald is returned. A wonder, master. Oh. Here's a costard broken in a shin. Some enigma, some riddle. Come, thy lenvoy, begin. <laughs> no enigma, no riddle, no lenvoy. No salve in the mail, sir. Oh, sir, plantain, a plain plantain. No lenvoy, sir, no lenvoy, no salve, sir. But a plantain. By virtue, thou enforcest laughter. <laughs> Thy silly thought, my spleen. <laughs> the heaving of my lungs provokes me to ridiculous smiling. <laughs> Pardon me, my stars. Doth the inconsiderate take salve for l'envoy and the word l'envoy for a salve? <laughs> Do the wise think their mother is not l'envoy a salve? No, page. It is an epilogue or discourse to make plain some obscure precedence that hath too far been sane. I will example it. The fox, the ape, and the humble bee were still at odds be but three. There's the moral now, the lenvoy. I will add the lenvoy. Say the moral again. The fox, the ape, and the humble bee were still at odds, being but three. Until Goose came out of door and stayed the odds by adding four. Now will I begin your moral, and do you follow with my lenvoy? The fox, the ape, and the humble bee were still at odds, being but three. Until the goose came out of door and stayed the odds by adding four. A good lenvoy, ending in the goose. What do you desire more? The boy is sold him a bargain, a goose that's flat. Sir, your pennyworth is good, and your goose be fat. To sell a bargain well is as cunning as fast and loose. Let me see. A fat land boy. Oh, that's a fat goose. Hey, come here, there. Come here, there. How, how did this argument begin? By saying that a costard was broken in a shin, then called you for the land boy. True, and I for a plantain. Thus came your argument in. Then the boy's fat land boy, the goose that you bought, and he ended the market. But tell me, how was there a costard broken in a shin? I will tell you sensibly. Thou hast no feeling of it, moat. I will speak that land boy. I cast out running out that was safely within, fell over the threshold, and broke my shin. We will talk no more of this matter. <laughs> Till there be more matter in the shin. Zero costard, I will enfranchise thee. Oh, marry me to one Francis. I smell some lenvoy, some goose in thee. By my sweet soul, I mean setting thee at liberty, and <laughs> freedoming thy person. Thou wert immured, captivated, restrained, bound, choked. 
true. And now you will be my purgation and let me loose. I will give thee thy liberty, set thee from durance, and you thereof impose on thee nothing but this. Bear this significant to the country maid, Jaquanetta. There is remuneration. For the best ward of mine honor is rewarding my dependence. Ma, follow. Like the sequel, I, Signor Custard, as you. My sweet hands of man's flesh, my encourage you. <laughs> now will I look to his remuneration. Remuneration. <laughs> Oh, that's the Latin word for three farthings. Three farthings, remuneration. What's the price of this inkle? One penny. <laughs> now I'll give you a remuneration. Why it carries it? Remuneration. Why is it a fairer name than French crown? I shall never buy and sell out of this word. Oh, my good name, Costard, exceedingly well met. Pray you, sir, how much carnation ribbon may a man buy for a remuneration? What is a remuneration? Oh, sir, half penny farthing. Why then, three farthing worth of silk. Oh, thank you, worship. Gubber, will you? Oh, stay, slave, I must employ thee. As thou wilt win my favour, good my knave, do one thing for me that I shall entreat. When would you have it done, sir? This afternoon. Well, I will do it, sir. Fare you well. Thou oh, knowest not what it is. I shall now see when I've done it. My villain, thou must know first. I will come to your worship tomorrow morning. It must be done this afternoon. Hark, slave, it is but this. <laughs> the princess comes to hunt here in the park. And in her train there is a gentle lady. When tongue speaks sweetly, then they name her name, and Rosaline they call her. Mm. Ask for her, and to her white hand see thou do commend this sealed up counsel. Mm. There's thy guerdon. Go. Guerdon? Oh, sweet guerdon! Better than remuneration. Helen Pensworth, better! Most sweet guardon. I will do it, sir. Imprint. Guardon. Remuneration. Guardon. Remuneration. Oh, and I forsooth in love. I that have been love's whip. A very beadle to a humorous sigh. A critic, nay, a night watch constable, a domineering pedant o'er the boy, than whom no mortal so magnificent. This wimpled, whining, purblind, wayward boy, this senior junior, giant dwarf, Dan Cupid, regent of love rhymes, lord of folded arms, the anointed sovereign of sighs and groans, liege of all loiterers and malcontents, dread prince of plackets, king of codpieces, sole imperator and great general of trotting parators. Oh, my little heart, and I to be a corporal of his field, and wear his colours like a tumbler's hoop. What? I love, I sue, I seek a wife. A woman that is like a German clock, still a repairing, ever out of frame, and never going right, being a watch, but being watched that it may still go right. Nay, to be perjured, which is worst of all, and among three to love the worst of all, a whitely wanton with a velvet brow, with two pitch balls stuck in her face for eyes, I and by heaven, one that will do the deed, though Argus were her eunuch and her guard, and I to sigh for her, to watch for her, to pray for her. Go to, it is a plague that Cupid will impose for my neglect of his almighty dreadful little might. Well, I will love Right, sigh, pray, sue, and groan. Some men must love my lady, and some Joan. <laughs> that spurred his horse so hard against the steep uprising of the hill? I know not, but I think it was not he. Where he was, he showed a mounting mind. Well, Lord, today we shall have our dispatch. On Saturday we will return to France. Then Forrester, my friend, 
Where is the bush that we must stand and play the murderer in? Hereby, upon the edge of yonder coppice. Stand where you may make the fairest shoot. I thank my beauty, I am fair that shoot. And thereupon thou speakst the fairest shoot. Well, pardon me, madam, for I meant not so. What, what? First praise me and again say no. Oh, short-lived pride. Not fair, lack for woe. Yes, <laughs> madam, fair. Nay, never paint me now. Where fair is not, praise cannot mend the brow. Here, good my glass. Take this for telling true. Ooh. Fair payment for foul words is more than due. Oh, nothing but fair is that which you inherit. You see, see, my beauty will be saved by merit. <laughs> oh, heresy and fair fit for these days. A giving hand, though foul, shall have fair praise. But come, the bow. Oh. Now mercy goes to kill. And shooting well is then accounted ill. Thus will I save my credit in the shoot. Not wounding. Pity would not let me do it. If wounding, then it was to show my skill that more for praise than purpose meant to kill. And out of question, so it is sometimes, glory grows guilty of detested crimes. When for fame's sake, for praise and outward part, we bend to that the working of the heart. As I, for praise alone, now seek to spill the poor dear's blood, that my heart means no ill. Do not cursed wives hold that self-sovereignty only for praise's sake when they strive to be lords o'er their lords? Only for praise. <laughs> and praise we may afford to any lady that subdues a lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here comes a member of the Commonwealth. God dig it at all. Pray you, which is the head lady? Uh, thou shalt know her fellow by the rest that have no heads. <laughs> which is the greatest lady, the highest? The thickest and the tallest. <laughs> the thickest and the tallest? It is so, truth is truth. And your waist, mistress, were as slender as my wit. One of these maids' girdles for your waist to be fit. Are oh, not you the chief woman? You are the thickest here. What's your will, sir? What's your will? I have a letter from Monsieur Barone to one Lady Rosalind. Oh, oh, thy letter, thy letter. He's a good friend of mine. Stand aside, good bearer. Boy it, you can carve. Break up this capon. I am bound to serve. Oh, oh, this letter is mistook. Mm -hmm. It imported none here. It is writ to Jacquinetta. We will read it, I swear. Break the neck of the wax and everyone give ear. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, by heaven, that thou art fair is most infallible. True, that thou art beauteous. Truth itself, that thou art lovely. More fairer than fair, beautiful than beauteous, truer than truth itself. Have commiseration on thy heroical vassal. The magnanimous and most illustrious King Cophetua set eye upon the pernicious and indubitant beggar Zenelopon. And he it was that might rightly say, Veni vi divici, which to anathanize in the vulgar, O oh, base and obscure vulgar, videlicit, he came, saw, and overcame. He came one, saw two, <laughs> overcame three. <laughs> Who came? The king. Why did he come? To see. Why did he see? To overcome. To whom came he? To the beggar. What saw he? The beggar. Who overcame he? The beggar. Oh, the conclusion is victory. On whose side? The king's. <sighs> the captive is enriched. On whose side? The beggar's. The catastrophe is a nuptial. On whose side? The king's. No, on both in one or one in both. I am the king, for so stands the comparison. Thou the beggar, for so witnesseth thy lowliness. Shall I command thy love? I may. Shall I enforce thy love? I could. Shall I entreat thy love? I will. Oh, oh. What shalt thou exchange for rags, robes, for titles, titles? Oh. Thyself, me. Thus, expecting thy reply, I profane my lips on my foot, my eyes on my picture, and my heart on thy every part. Oh. <laughs> Thine, in the dearest design of industry, Don Adriano de Amardo. Oh, what plume of feathers is he that indicted this letter? What vein? What weathercock? Did you ever hear better? <laughs> <laughs> I am much deceived, but... I remember the style. Else your memory is bad going or it air uh, This Amardo is a Spaniard that keeps here in court. A fantasy, a monarcho, and one that makes sport to the prince and his bookmates. Thou, fellow, a word. Uh, who gave thee this letter? I told you, my lord. To whom shouldst thou give it? From my lord to my lady. From which lord to which lady? From my lord Verone, a good master of mine, to a lady of France that he called Rosaline. Thou hast mistaken his letter. Come, lords, away. Here, sweet, put up this. Twill be thine another day. Who is the suitor? 
Who is the shooter? Shall I teach you to know? I, my continent of beauty. Why, she that bears the bow, finely put on. <laughs> my lady goes to kill horns, but if thou marry, hang me by the neck if horns that year miscarry. Finely put on. Well, then I am the shooter. And who is your dear? If we choose by the horns, yourself come not near. <laughs> finely put on indeed. You will wrangle with her, Boyet, and she strikes at the brow. But she herself is hit lower. Have I hit her now? Shall I come upon thee with an old saying that was a man when King Pepin of France was a little boy, as touching the hit it? <laughs> so may I answer thee with one as old, that was a woman when Queen Guinevere of Britain was a little wench, as touching the hit it. Thou canst not hit it, hit it, hit it, thou canst not hit it, my good man. And I cannot, 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 and I cannot, another can. <laughs> most gross, most pleasant, how both did fit it. A mark marvellous well shot, where they both did hit it. <laughs> a mark, oh mark, but that mark, a mark, says my lady. Let the mark have a prick in it, to meet at, if it may be. Why do the bow hand, if your hand is out? Indeed, I must shoot nearer, or he'll may hit the clout. And if my hand be out, then belike your hand is in. Then will she get the upshot? by cleaving the pin. Oh. Come, come, you talk greasily. Your lips grow foul. She's too hard for you, a prick, sir. Challenge you to bowl. I fear too much rubby. Oh. Good night, my good owl. Oh. <laughs> by my soul, a swain, a most simple clown. <laughs> How the ladies and I have put him down. Oh, my troth, most sweet, yes, most incarnate vulgar wit. When it comes so smoothly up, so obscenely, as it were, so fit. Oh, Mardo, to the one side. Oh, a most dainty man. To see him walk before a lady and bear a fan. To see him kiss his hand. And how most sweetly it will swear. And his page to the side. A handful of wit. Oh, heaven. It is a most pathetical bit. <laughs> so long. <laughs> Reverend sport, truly, and done in the testimony of a good conscience. But there was, as you know, sanguis in blood, rife as upon water, who now hangeth like a jewel in the ear of cello, the sky, the welkin, heaven, and anon falleth like a crab on the face of terror, the soil, the land, the earth. Truly, Master Holofernes, the epithets are sweetly varied, like a scholar at the least. But, sir, I assure ye, it was a buck of the first head. Sir Nathaniel Hoodcred. It was not an old grey doe, it was a pricket. <laughs> Most barbarous intimation, yet a kind of insinuation, as it were, in via, in way of explication, facere, as it were, replication, or rather, ostentare, to show, as it were, his inclination after his undressed, unpolished, uneducated, unpruned, untrained, or rather unlettered, or rather less unconfirmed fashion, to insert again my old credo for a deer. I said the deer was not an old credo, twas a pricket. Twice of simplicity biscoctus. Oh, thou monster, ignorance. How deformed dost thou look? Sir, he hath never fed of the dainties that are bred in a book. Mm. He hath not eat paper, as it were. He hath not drunk ink. <laughs> His intellect is not replenished. He is only an animal, yeah. only sensible in the duller parts. And such barren plants are set before us that we thankful should be, which we of taste and feeling are for those parts that do fructify in us more than he. <laughs> for as it would ill become me to be vain, indiscreet, or a fool, so were there a patch set on learning to see him in a school. But omne bene, say I, mm -hmm. <laughs> being of an old father's mind, many can brook the weather that love not the wind. You two are bookmen. Can you tell me by your wit what was a month old at Cain's birth that's not five weeks old as yet? Dictina, good man, Dal. What? <sighs> Dictina, good man, Dal. What is Dictina? A title to Phoebe, uh? to Luna, uh? to the moon. The moon was a month old when Adam was no more, and wrought not to five weeks 
when he came to five score. <laughs> <laughs> the illusion holds in the exchange. And I say the pollution holds in the exchange, for the moon is never but a month old. And I say beside that, twas a pricket that the princess killed. Sir Nathaniel, will you hear an extemporal epitaph on the death of the deer? Oh. And to humour the ignorant, I have called the deer the princess killed. A pricket. <laughs> Purge, yea, good Master Holofernes, purge, yea. So it shall please you to abrogate scurrility. I will something affect the letter, for it argues the facility. Oh. The prayful princess pierced and pricked a pretty pleasing pricket. Oh. Oh. Some say a saw, but not a saw, till now made saw with shooting. The dogs did yell, put L to saw. Then sorrel jumps from thicket, oh. or cricket saw, or else sorrel. The people fall a hooting. Mm -hmm. If saw be saw, then l to saw makes fifty saws, or sorrel. Oh. Oh. Of one saw, I an hundred make by adding but one. More else. Oh, <laughs> a rare talent. If a talent be a claw, look how he claws him with a talent. This is a gift I have. Simple, simple, a foolish, extravagant spirit, full of forms, figures, shapes, objects, ideas, apprehensions, motions, revolutions. These are begot in the ventricle of memory, nourished in the womb of Piamata, and delivered upon the mellowing of occasion. But... The gift is good in those in whom it is acute, and I am thankful for it. Sir, I praise the Lord for you, and so may my parishioners, for their sons are well tutored by you, and their daughters profit very greatly under you. <laughs> you are a good member of the Commonwealth. Sir Hercule, if their sons be ingenious, they shall want no instruction. If their daughters be capable, I will put it to them. Goodbye. Via Sabitki Paco Locator. A sole feminine salute of us. God give you good morrow, Master Person. Good morrow. Be so good as to read me this letter. Oh. It was given me by Costard and sent me from Don Armado. I beseech you, read it. Facile oh. preco de lida, quando pecas, omne sub umbra ruminat, and so forth. Oh, ah, it? good old Mantuan. <laughs> <laughs> I may speak of thee as a traveller death of Venice. Venetia, Venetia, chi non ti vede, non ti pretia. Old mansion, old mansion, who understandeth thee not, loves thee not. Tu tre sola mi fa. Under pardon, sir, what are the contents, or rather, as Horace says in his... What, my soul? Verses? Aye, sir. And very learned. Let me hear a star for stands a verse. Legidomine. Uh -uh. <clears throat> if love make me forsworn, how shall I swear to love? Ah, never faith could hold if not to beauty vowed. Though to myself forsworn, to thee I'll faithful prove. Those thoughts to me were oaks to thee like osiers bowed. Oh. Study his bias, leaves, and makes his book thine eyes, where all those pleasures live that art would comprehend. If knowledge be the mark, to know thee shall suffice. Well learned is that tongue that well can thee commend. All ignorant that soul that sees thee without wonder, which is to me some praise that I thy parts admire. <laughs> <laughs> um, thy eye, Jove's lightning bears, thy voice his dreadful thunder which not to anger bent is music and sweet fire. Oh. <laughs> uh, celestial as thou art, oh, pardon love this wrong that sings heaven's praise with such an earthly tongue. You find not the apostrophus and so miss the accent. Let me supervise the cancelette. Oh. Here are only numbers ratified, but for the elegancy, facility, and golden cadence of poesy caret. Oh. Ovidius Naso was the man, and why indeed Naso, but for smelling out the odoriferous flowers of fancy and jerks of invention. <laughs> Imitari is nothing, so that the hound is master, the ape is keeper, the tired horse is rider. But, Demoiselle Virgin. Sir? Was this directed to you? Right, sir. <laughs> From uh, 
One Monsieur Barone, one of the strange queen's lords. I will ever glance the superscript. To the snow white hand of the most beauteous Lady Rosaline. Oh. oh. Uh, I will look again on the intellect of the letter for the nomination of the party writing to the person written unto. Your ladyships in all desired employment. Barone. Sir Nathaniel, this Barone is one of the voters with the king. And here he hath framed a letter to a sequent of the stranger queens, which accidentally, or by way of progression, have miscarried. Ah. Trip and go, my sweet. Deliver this paper into the royal hand of the king. It may concern much. Well, sir, Stay well, not sir, thy compliment. Well, I forgive well, thy duty. Well, Adieu. Well, uh, good costard, go with me. Uh, sir, God save your life. Have with thee, my girl. Sir, you have done this in the fear of God, very religiously. And as a certain father says... Sir, tell not me of the father. I do fear colourable colours. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, to return to the verses... Uh, did they please you, Sir Nathaniel? Um, oh, marvellous well, uh, for the pen. I do dine today at the father's of a certain pupil of mine, where, if before the past it shall please you to gratify the table with a grace, I will, on my privilege I have with the parents of the foresaid child or pupil, undertake your benvenuto, oh. where I will prove those verses to be very unlearned, oh. neither savouring of poetry, wit, nor invention. I beseech your society. And thank you, too. For society, says the text, is the happiness of life. And certes, the text most infallibly concludes it. <laughs> Sir, I do invite you, too. Oh, you oh, shall yeah. not say me nay. Pauca verba. Away. The gentles are at their game. And we will to our recreation. The king, he is hunting the deer. I am coursing myself. They have pitch to toil. I am toiling in a pitch. Pitch that defiles. Defile, foul word. Well, set thee down, sorrow. For so they say the fool said, and so say I, and I the fool. Well proved wit. By the Lord, this love is as mad as Ajax. It kills sheep. It kills me. I, a sheep, well proved again on my side. I will not love. If I do, hang me. If faith, I will not. Oh, but her eye, by this light, but for her eye, I would not love her. Yes, for her two eyes. Well, I do nothing in the world but lie and lie in my throat. By heaven, I do love, and it hath taught me to rhyme and to be melancholy. And here is part of my rhyme, and here my melancholy. Well, she hath one of my sonnets already. The clown bore it, the fool sent it, and the lady hath it. Sweet clown, sweeter fool, sweetest lady. By the world, I would not care a pin if the other three were in. Here comes one with a paper. God give him grace to groan. I me, shot by heaven, proceed, sweet Cupid. Thou hast thumped him with thy bird boat under the left pack. If they secret. So sweet a kiss the golden sun gives not to those fresh morning drops upon the rose as thy eye beams when their fresh rays have smoked the night of dew that on my cheeks down flows. Nor shines the silver moon one half so bright through the transparent bosom of the deep as doth thy face through tears of mine give light. Thou shinest in every tear that I do weep. No drop but as a coach doth carry thee, so ridest thou triumphing in my woe. Do but behold the tears that swell in me, and they thy glory through my grief will show. But do not love thyself, then thou wilt keep my tears for glasses, and still make me weep. O oh, queen of queens, how far dost thou excel? No thought can think, nor tongue of mortal tell. How shall she know my griefs? 
I'll drop the paper. Sweet leaves, shade, folly. Who is he comes here? What Longaville and reading? Now in thy likeness one more fool appear. Ay, me, I am forsworn. Why, he comes in like a perjure, wearing papers. Am I the first that have been perjured, sir? I could put thee in comfort, not by two that I know. I fear these stubborn lines lack power to move. Oh, sweet Maria, empress of my love, these numbers will I tear and write in prose. Oh, rhymes are guards on wanton Cupid's hose. This figure not his shop. Uh, this same shall go. Did not the heavenly rhetoric of thine eye, against whom the world cannot hold argument, persuade my heart to this false perjury? Her vows for thee broke deserve not punishment. A woman I forswore, but I will prove thou being a goddess, I forswore not thee. My vow was earthly, thou a heavenly love. Thy grace being gained cures all disgrace in me. Vows are but breath, and breath a vapour is. Then thou, fair sun, which on my earth dost shine, exhalest this vapour vow. In thee it is. If broken, then it is no fault of mine. If by me broke, what fool is not so wise to lose an oath to win a paradise? This is the liver vein which makes flesh a deity, a green goose, a goddess. Pure, pure idolatry. God amend us, God amend. We are much out of the way. By whom shall I send it? The company. Stay. All hid, all hid, an old infant play. Like a demigod here sit I in the sky, and wretched fool's secrets heedfully o'er oh, I. More sacks to the mill, oh heavens, I have my wish. Do maim transformed four woodcocks in a dish. Oh, most divine, Kate. Oh, most profane, coxcomb. By heaven, the wonder in a mortal eye. By earth, she is not corporal, there you lie. Her amber hairs for foul have amber quoted. An amber-coloured raven was well noted. As upright as the cedar. Stoop, I say, her shoulder is with child. As fair as day. Ay, as some days, but then no sun must shine. Oh, but I had my wish. And I had mine. And I mine too, good lord. Amen, so I had mine. Is not that a good word? I would forget her. But a fever, she reigns in my blood and will remembered be. A fever in your blood? Why then, incision would let her out in saucers. Sweet Miss Prishon. Once more, I'll read the ode that I have written. Once more, I'll mark how love can vary wit. <clears throat> On a day, alack the day, love whose month is ever May, spied a blossom passing fair, playing in the wanton air. Through the velvet leaves the wind, all unseen can passage find, that the lover, sick to death, wished himself the heaven's breath. Ere, quoth he, thy cheeks may blow, ere would I might triumph so. But alack, my hand is sworn ne'er to pluck thee from thy thorn. Vow, alack, for youth unmeet, youth so apt to pluck a sweet. Do not call it sin in me that I am forsworn for thee. Thou, for whom Jove would swear Juno but an Ethiop were, and deny himself for Jove, turning mortal for thy love. <clears throat> That's what I send. And something else more plain that shall express my true love's fasting pain. Oh, would the king of Barone and Longerville were lovers too. Ill to example ill would from my forehead wipe a perjured note. For none offend, where all alike do dote. But do you mean? Hmm? For thy oh, love uh, is far from charity that in love's grief desires society. Uh, you may look pale, but I should blush, I know, to be o'erheard and taken napping, sir. Come, um, sir, you blush. Uh, his your case is such. You chide at him, offending twice as much. I mean, you do not love Maria. Longaville did never sonnet for her sake compile, nor never lay his wreathed arms athwart his loving bosom to keep down his heart. I have been closely shrouded in this bush and marked you both, and for you both did blush. <laughs> what will Barone say when that he shall hear a faith infringed which such zeal did swear? How will he scorn, how will he spend his wit, how will he triumph, leap, and laugh at it? For all the wealth that ever I did see, I would not have him know so much by me. Now step I forth to whip hypocrisy. Ah, good my liege, I pray thee, pardon me. 
Good heart, what grace hast thou thus to reprove these worms for loving that art most in love? Your eyes do make no coaches. In your tears there is no certain princess that appears. You'll not be perjured, if a hateful thing touched none but minstrels like of sonneting. But are you not ashamed, nay, are you not all three of you to be thus much o'ershot? You found his moat, the king your moat did see, but I a bean do find in each of three. Oh, what a scene of foolery have I seen, of sighs, of groans, of sorrow, and of teen. Oh, me, with what strict patience have I sat to see a king transformed to a gnat, to see great Hercules whipping a gig, and profound Solomon to tune a jig, and Nestor play at pushpin with the boys, and critic time and laugh at idle toys. <laughs> Where lies thy grief? Oh, tell me, good Dumaine, and gentle Longerville, where lies thy pain? And where my lieges, all about the breast, a caudal hole? Too bitter is thy jest. Are we betrayed thus to thy overview? Not you by me, but I betrayed by you. I that am honest, I that hold a sin to break the vow I am engaged in, I am betrayed by keeping company with moonlight men, men of inconstancy. God bless the king! What present hast thou there? Some certain treason. What makes treason here? Nay, it makes nothing, sir. If it mar nothing neither, the treason in you go in peace away together. I beseech your grace, let this letter be read. Our person misdoubts it, cause treason, he said. Barone, read it over. Where hadst thou it? Uh, of Costard. Where hadst thou it? Of Dun Ad Romania. Dun Ad Romania. Oh, oh no, what is it? Why dost thou tear it? A toy, my liege, a toy. Your grace needs not fear it. It did move him to passion, and therefore let's hear it. It is Barone's writing, and here is his name. Oh, you horse on log ahead, you were born to do me shame. Oh. Guilty, my lord, guilty, I confess, I confess. What? That you three fools lacked me, fool, to make up the mess. <laughs> he, he, and you, and you, my liege, and I are pick purses in love, and we deserve to die. Oh, dismiss this audience, and I shall tell you more. Now the number is even. True, true, we are four. Will these turtles be gone? Ten sirs away. Walk aside the true folk. <laughs> Let the traitors stay. Oh. Sweet lords, sweet <laughs> lovers, oh, let us embrace. As true we are as flesh and blood can be, the sea will ebb and flow, heaven show his face. Young blood doth not obey an old decree. We cannot cross the cause why we were born. Therefore, of all hands must we be forsworn. But did these rent lines show some love of thine? Did they, quoth you? Who sees the heavenly Rosaline that, like a rude and savage man of Eind, at the first opening of the gorgeous east, bows not his vassal head and, struck and blind, kisses the base ground with obedient breast? What zeal, what fury have inspired thee now? My love, her mistress, is a gracious moon. She, an attending star, scarce seen a light. <laughs> My eyes are then no eyes, nor I barone. Oh, but for my love, day would turn to night. A withered hermit, five score winters worn, might shake off fifty looking in her eye. Beauty doth varnish age as if newborn, and gives the crutch the cradle's infancy. Oh, tis the sun that maketh all things shine. By heaven, my love is black as ebony. As <laughs> ebony like her, a oh, wood divine, a wife of such wood worth felicity. Oh, who can give an oath? Where is a book that I may swear beauty doth beauty lack if that she learn not of her eye to look? No face is fair that is not full so black. Oh, oh paradox. <laughs> black is the badge of hell, the hue of dungeons and the school of night. And beauty's crest becomes the heaven's well. Devil soonest tempt resembling spirits of light. Oh, if in black my lady's brows be decked, it mourns that painting and usurping hair should ravish doters with a false aspect, and therefore is she born to make black fair. <laughs> to look like her, our chimney sweep is black, and since her time, a collier's counted bright. And Ethiopes of their sweet complexion crack. Dark needs no candles now, for dark is light. Your mistresses dare never come in rain, for fear their colours should be washed away. Oh. For good yours did, for sir, to tell you plain, I'll find a fairer face not washed today. <laughs> I'll prove her fair, or talk till doomsday here. No devil will fright thee then so much as she. I never knew a man hold vile stuff so dear. Oh, look, here's thy love, my foot, and her face, see. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, if the streets were paved with thine eyes, her feet were much too dainty for such tread. Oh, vile. Then as she goes, what upward lies the street should see as she walked overhead. But what of this? Are we not all in love? Oh, nothing so sure, and thereby all forsworn. Then leave this chat. And good Barrow, now prove our loving lawful, and our faith not torn. I marry there some flattery for this evil. Oh, some authority, how to proceed. Some tricks, some quillets, how to cheat the devil. Some salve for perjury. Oh, it is more than need. Have at you, then, affections, men-at-arms. Consider what you first did swear unto. To fast, to study, and to see no woman. Flat treason against the kingly state of youth. Say, can you fast? Your stomachs are too young, and abstinence engenders maladies. Oh, we have made a vow to study, lords, and in that vow we have forsworn our books. For when would you, my liege, or you, or you, in leaden contemplation, have found out such fiery numbers as the prompting eyes of beauty's tutors have enriched you with? Other slow arts entirely keep the brain, and therefore finding barren practices scarce show a harvest of their heavy toil. But love, first learned in a lady's eyes, lives not alone immured in the brain, but with the motion of all elements, courses as swift as thought in every power, and gives to every power a double power above their functions and their offices. It adds a precious seeing to the eye. A lover's eyes will gaze an eagle blind. A lover's ear will hear the lowest sound when the suspicious head of theft is stopped. Love's feeling is more soft and sensible than are the tender horns of cockled snails. Love's tongue proves dainty Bacchus gross in taste. For valor, is not love a Hercules still climbing trees in the Hesperides? Subtle as sphinx, as sweet and musical as bright Apollo's lute strung with his hair. And when love speaks, the voice of all the gods make heaven drowsy with the harmony. Never durst poet touch a pen to write until his ink were tempered with love's sighs. Oh, then his lines would ravish savage ears and plant in tyrants mild humility. From women's eyes this doctrine I derive. They sparkle still the right Promethean fire. They are the books, the arts, the academes that show, contain, and nourish all the world. Else none at all in aught proves excellent. Then fools you were, these women, to forswear, or keeping what is sworn you will prove fools. For wisdom's sake, a word that all men love, or for love's sake, a word that loves all men, <laughs> or for men's sake, the authors of these women, or women's sake, by whom we men are men, let us once lose our oaths to find ourselves, or else we lose ourselves to keep our oaths. It is religion to be thus forsworn, for charity itself fulfills the law, and who can sever love from charity? Saint <laughs> Cupid, then, and soldiers to the field. Advance your standards, and upon them, <laughs> lords, pell-mell down with them, but be first advised in conflict that you get the son of them. <laughs> now to plain dealing, lay these glozes by. Shall we resolve to woo these girls of France? And win them, too. Therefore, let us devise some entertainment for them in their tent. <laughs> first, from the park, let us conduct them this then homeward every man attach the hand of his fair mistress. In the afternoon we will with some strange pastime solace them such as the shortness of the time can shape for revels, dances, masks and merry hours for run fair love strewing her way with flowers. Away, away, no time shall be omitted that will be time and may by us be fitted. Allons, allons, toad cockle reap no corn. And justice always whirls in equal measure. Light wenches may prove plagues to men forsworn. If so, our copper buys no better treasure. Oh. Satis quid sufficit. <laughs> I praise God for you, sir. Your reasons at dinner have been sharp and sententious. Mm. Uh, pleasant without scurrility, witty without affection, 
audacious without impudency, learned without opinion, and strange without heresy. I did converse this uh, quondam day with a companion of the king's who is intituled, uh, nominated, or called Don Adriano de Amado. Nove omnum tancum te. His humour is lofty, his discourse peremptory, his tongue filed, his eye ambitious, oh. his gait majestical, and his general behaviour vain, ridiculous, and transonical. He's too picked, too spruce, too affected, too odd, as it were, to peregrinate as I may call it. A most singular and choice epithet. He draweth out the thread of his verbosity finer than the staple of his argument. I abhor such fanatical fantasimes, such rackers of orthography as to speak doubt, fine, when he should say doubt, mm. debt, when he should pronounce debt, D-E-B-T, not D-E-T. He cleppeth a calf, corpse, a half, half, <laughs> neighbour, vocateur, Never, nay, abbreviated name. This is abominable, which he would call abominable. It insinuateth me of insane, nay, intelligence domine, to make frantic, lunatic. Laus deo bone intelligo. Bone, bon for bon. Hmm? Christian a little scratched. True, sir. Ah, ah. vides me quis venit. Video et gaudio. Chira. Quare chira, not sira. Men of peace, well encountered. Most military, sir. The salutation. They have been at a great feast of languages and stolen the scrap. Oh, they have lived long on the arms basket of words. I marvel thy master hath not eaten thee for a word. For thou art not so long by the head as honorific carpalitude in itartibus. Thou art easier swallowed than the flap dragon. Peace. The peal begins. Monsieur, are you not lettered? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. He teaches boys the horn book. What is A, B spelt backward with a horn on his head? Ba, Puresha, with a horn added. Ba, most silly sheep with a horn. You hear his learning. Quiz, quiz, thou consonant. The last of the five vowels, if you repeat them, or the fifth, if I... I will repeat them. A, E, I... The sheep, the other two, concludes it. Oh, you. Now, by the salt wave of the Mediterranean, a sweet touch, a quick renew of wit, snip, snap, quick and home, it rejoiceth my intellect, true wit. Uh, it by a child uh, to an old man, which is wit old. What is the figure? What is the figure? Horn. Thou disputes like an infant. Go whip thy gig. A gig of a cuckold's horn. Oh, and the heavens were so pleased that thou wert but my bastard. What a joyful father wouldst thou make me. Oh, go to. Thou hast it at dunghill at the finger's ends, as they say. Oh, I smell false Latin. Dunghill for unduem. Arts, man, preambulate. We will be singled from the barbarous. Oh. Do you not educate youth at the charge house at the top of the mountain? Or more, the hill? At your sweet pleasure for the mountain. I do. Sans question. Sir, it is the king's most sweet pleasure and affection to congratulate the princess at her pavilion in the posteriors of this day, which the rude multitude call the afternoon. The posteriors? Terrier of the day, most generous sir, uh, is liable, congruent, and uh, measurable for the afternoon. The word is well called, chose, sweet and apt, I do assure you, sir, I do assure. Sir, the king is a noble gentleman, and my familiar, I do assure you, a very good friend. For what is inward between us, let it pass. I do beseech thee, remember thy courtesy. I beseech thee, a parallel ahead, uh, oh. and among other importunate and most serious designs, and of great import indeed, too, but let that pass. For I must tell thee, it will please his grace by the world some time to lean upon my poor shoulder, uh, and with his royal finger thus dally with my excrement, uh, with my mustachio, uh, but, sweetheart, let that pass. By the world, I recount no fable. Some certain special honours it pleaseth his greatness to impart to Armado, a soldier, a man of travel that hath seen the world. But let that pass. 
The very all of all is but sweetheart. I do implore secrecy that the king would have me present the princess, sweet Chuck, with some delightful ostentation or show or pageant or antique or firework. Now, understanding that the curate and your sweet self are good at such eruptions and sudden breaking out of mirth, as it were, I have acquainted you with all to the end to crave your assistance. Sir, <clears throat> you shall present before her the nine worthies. Sir Nathaniel, uh, oh, as uh, concerning some entertainment of time, some show in the uh, posterior of this day to be rendered by our assistance, oh, the king's sorry. command, and this oh. most gallant, illustrate, and learned gentleman oh. before the princess, I say, None so fit as to present the nine worthies. Ah, where will you find men worthy enough to present them? Joshua, yourself. Oh. Myself, Judas Maccabeus. This swain, because of his great limb or joint, <laughs> shall pass Pompey the Great. Yeah. <laughs> the page, Hercules. The pardon, sir, error. He is not quantity enough for that worthy's thumb. He's not so big as the end of his club. Shall I have audience? He shall present Hercules in minority. His enter and exit shall be strangling a snake. And I will have an apology for that purpose. An excellent device. So if any of the audience hiss, you may cry, Well done, Hercules. Now thou crushest the snake. That is the way to make an offence gracious, so few have the grace to do it. For the rest of the worthies? I will play three myself. Right, worthy gentlemen. Shall I tell you a thing? We attend. We will have, if this fad's not, an antic. I beseech you, follow. Be our good man, Dull. Thou hast spoken no word all this while. Or understood none, neither, sir. Hello. We will employ thee. I'll make one in a dance or so, or, or I will play on the tabor to the worthies and let them dance the hay. Yeah. <laughs> Most dull, honest <laughs> dull. Transport away! <laughs> We departed fairings come thus plentifully in. A lady walled about with diamonds. Look you what I have from the loving king. Mm. Madam, came nothing else along with that? Nothing but this, yes. As much love in rhyme as would be crammed up in a sheet of paper writ of both sides of the leaf, margin and all, that he was fain to seal on Cupid name. That was the way to make his godhead wax, for he hath been five thousand year a boy. Ay, and a shrewd unhappy gallows, too. You'll ne'er be friends with him. I killed your sister. He made her melancholy sad and heavy. And so she died. Had she been light like you, of such a merry, nimble, stirring spirit, she might have been a grand arm ere she died. And so may you, for a light heart lives long. What's your dark meaning, mouse, of this light word? A light conditioned in a beauty dark. We need more light to find your meaning out. You'll mar the light by taking it in snuff, therefore I'll darkly end the argument. <laughs> Look what you do, you do is still in the dark. So do not you, for you are a light wench. Indeed, I weigh not you, and therefore lie. You weigh me not, oh, that you care not for me. Great reason for past care is still past cure. <laughs> well, banded bow. A set of wit well played. But, Rosaline, you have a favour too. Who sent it? And what is it? I would you knew. And if my face were but as fair as yours, my favour were as great. Be witness this. Oh. Nay, I have verses too, I thank Barone. The number's true, and were the numbering too, I were the fairest goddess on the ground. I am compared to twenty thousand fairs. Oh, he hath drawn my picture in his letter. Anything like? Much in the letters, nothing in the praise. <laughs> Beauty as a zinc, a good conclusion. Fair as a text be in a copybook. Wear pencils, ho. Let me not die your debtor, my red dominical, my golden letter. Oh, that your face were not so full of O's. <gasps> a pox of that jest, I beshrew all throws. But Catherine, what was sent to you from Fair Dumaine? Madam, this glove. Did he not send you twain? <laughs> yes, madam. <laughs> and moreover, some thousand verses of a faithful lover, a huge translation of hypocrisy, vilely compiled, profound simplicity. This and uh, these pearls to me sent Longerville. The letter is too long by half a mile. I think no less. Uh, dost thou not wish in heart the chain were longer and the letter short? <laughs> Aye, or I would these hands might never part. We are wise girls to mock our lovers so. They are worse fools to purchase mocking so. 
That same Barone, I'll torture ere I go. Oh, that I knew he were but in by the week. How I would make him fawn and beg and seek and wait the season and observe the times and spend his prodigal wits in bootless rhymes and shape his service wholly to my hests and make him proud to make me proud the jests. So pair taunt like would I horse sway his state that he should be my fool and I his fate. None are so surely caught when they are catched as wit turned fool. Folly, in wisdom hatched, hath wisdom's warrant and the help of school, and wit's own grace to grace a learned fool. The blood of youth burns not with such excess as gravity's revolt to wantonness. Folly in fools bears not so strong a note as foolery in the wise when wit doth dote. Since all the power thereof it doth apply to prove by wit worth in simplicity. <laughs> Here comes Boyot and Murphy in his face. Oh, I am stabbed with laughter. <laughs> Where's her grace? Thy news, Boyot. <laughs> prepare, madam, prepare. Arm when she's arm. Encounters mounted are against your peace. Love doth approach disguised, armed in arguments. You'll be surprised. Muster your wits, stand in your own defense, or hide your heads like cowards and fly hence. <laughs> Dennis to St. Cupid, what are they that charge their breath against a face out say? <laughs> <laughs> Under the cool shade of a sycamore, I thought to close mine eyes some half an hour. When, lo, to interrupt my purposed rest, towards that shade I might behold addressed the king and his companions. Warily, I stole into a neighbor thicket by, and overheard what you shall overhear, mm. that by and by, disguised, they will be here. Oh. <gasps> Their herald is a pretty knavish page, that well by heart hath conned his embassage. Action and accent did they teach him there. Uh, thus must thou speak, and thus thy body bear. <laughs> and ever and anon they made a doubt. Presence majestical would put him out. <laughs> For, quoth the king, an angel shalt thou see. <gasps> Yet fear not thou, but speak audaciously. <laughs> the boy replied, an angel is not evil. I should have feared her had she been a devil. <laughs> <laughs> With that, all laughed and clapped him on the shoulder, making the bold wag by their praises bolder. One rubbed his elbow thus and fleered and swore a better speech was never spoke before. Another, with his finger in his thumb, cried, Via, we will doot, come what will come. <laughs> the third, he capered and cried, All goes well. The fourth turned on the toe and down he fell. With that, they all did tumble on the ground with such a zealous laughter, so profound, that in this spleen ridiculous appears to check their folly, passion's solemn tears. But what, but what? Come they to visit us? <laughs> they do, they do. And are apparelled thus, like Muscovites or Russians, as I guess. <laughs> Their purpose is to pal, to court and dance, and every one his love feet will advance unto his several mistress, which they'll know by favours several which they did bestow. And will they so? The gallants shall be tasked. For ladies, we will every one be masked, and not a man of them shall have the grace, despite of suit, to see a lady's face. Hold, Rosaline, this favour thou shalt wear, and then the king will court thee for his dear. Hold, take thou this, my sweet, and give me thine, so shall Barone take me for Rosaline, <laughs> and change you favours too, so shall your loves woo contrary, deceived by these removes. Come on then, where the favours most in sight. But in this changing, what is your intent? The effect of my intent is to cross theirs. They do it but in mockery merriment, and mock for mock is only my intent. Their several counsels they unbosom shall to loves mistook, and so be mocked with all upon the next occasion that we meet with visages displayed to talk and greet. But shall we dance, mm. if they desire us toot? No. To the death, we will not move a foot, <laughs> nor to their pen speech render we no grace. But while tis spoke, each turn away her face. Why, that contempt will kill the speaker's heart and quite divorce his memory from his part. Therefore I do it, and I make no doubt the rest will ne'er come in if he be out. There's no such sport as sport by sport or throne, to make theirs ours and ours none but our own. So shall we stay mocking intended game, and they, well mocked, depart away with shame. <laughs> Trumpet sounds, be masked, the maskers come. All hail, the richest beauties on the earth. Beauty is no richer than rich taffeta. A holy parcel of the fairy stains. That ever turn their backs to mortal views. Their eyes, villain, their eyes. That ever turn their eyes to mortal views. Ow! 
true, out indeed. Out of your favours, heavenly spirits, vouchsafe not to behold. Once to behold, Rose. <laughs> Once to behold with your sunbeamed eyes. With your sunbeamed eyes. They will not answer to that epithet. You will best call it daughter beamed eye. They do not mark me, and that brings me out. Is this your perfectness? Be gone, you rogue. What would these strangers know their minds, Boyette? If they do speak our language, tis our will that some plain man recount their purposes and know what they would. What would you with the princess? Nothing but peace and gentle visitation. What would they say they? Uh, nothing but peace and gentle visitation. Why, that they have, and bid them so be gone. She says you have it, and you may be gone. Say to her we have measured many miles to tread a measure with her on this grass. Yeah, they say that they have measured many a mile to tread a measure with you on this grass. It is not so. Ask them how many inches is in one mile. <laughs> if they have measured many, the measure then of one is easily told. <sighs> If to come hither you have measured miles, and many miles, the princess bids you tell how many inches doth fill up one mile. Tell her we measure them by weary steps. Uh, she hears herself. How many weary steps of many weary miles you have all gone are numbered in the travel of one mile? We number nothing that we spend for you. Our duty is so rich, so infinite, that we may do it still without account. Vouchsafe to show the sunshine of your face that we, like savages, may worship it. My face is but a moon and clouded, too. Blessed are clouds to do as such clouds do. Vouchsafe bright moon and these thy stars to shine, those clouds removed upon our watery eyes. Oh, vain petitioner, beg a greater matter. Thou now request but moonshine in the water. Then in our measure do but vouchsafe one change. Thou bidst me beg. This begging is not strange. Play music then. Nay, you must do it soon. Not yet? No dance. Thus change I like the moon. Will you not dance? How come you thus are strange? You took the moon at full, but now she's changed. Yet still she is the moon and I the man. The music plays, vouchsafe some motion to it. Our ears vouchsafe it. But your legs should do it. Since you are strangers and come here by chance, we'll not be nice. Take hands. We will not dance. Why take we hands then? Only to part friends. Curtsy, sweethearts. And so the measure ends. No measure of this measure. Be not nice. We can afford no more at such a price. Price you yourselves. What buys your company? Your absence only. That can never be. Then cannot we be bought, and so adieu. Twice to your visor, and half once to you. If you deny to dance, let's hold more check. In private, then? I am best pleased with that. White-handed mistress, one sweet word with thee. Honey and milk and sugar. There is three. Nay, then, two trays, and if you grow so nice, metheglin, wort, and manzi, well-run dice. There's half a dozen sweets. Seventh sweet adieu. Since you can cog, I'll play no more with you. One word in secret. Let it not be sweet. Thou grievest my gall. Gall? Bitter. Therefore, meet. Will you vouchsafe with me to change a word? Name it. Fair lady. Say you so. Fair lord. Take that for your fair lady. Please it you as much in private, and I'll bid adieu. <laughs> what? Was your visor made without a tongue? I know the reason, lady. Why ask? Oh, for your reason. Quickly, sir, I love. Uh, you have a double tongue within your mask and would afford my speechless visor half. Veal, quoth the Dutchman, is not veal a calf? A calf, fair lady? No, a fair lord calf. Uh, let's part the word. No, I'll not be your half. Take all and wean it. It may prove an ox. Oh, look how you butt yourself with these sharp mocks. Will you give horns, chaste lady? Uh, do not so. Then die a calf before your horns do grow. One word in private with you ere I die. Bleat softly then. The butcher hears you cry. <laughs> The tongues of mocking wenches are as keen as is the razor's edge, invisible, cutting a smaller hair than may be seen. Above the sense of sense, so sensible seemeth their confidence. Their conceits have wings fleeter than arrows, bullets, wind, thought, swifter things. Not one word more, my maid. Break off, break off. By heaven, all dry beaten with pure scoff. Farewell, mad wenches. You have simple wits. Twenty adieus, my frozen Muscovitz. What is the breed of wits so wondered at? Tapers they are, with your sweet breaths puffed out. Well, liking wits they have. Gross, gross. Ah, 
what? <laughs> oh, poverty and wit, kingly poor flout. Will they not think you hang themselves tonight or ever but in visors show their faces? This pert baron was out of countenance quite... Oh, they were all in lamentable cases. The king was weeping ripe for a good word. The baron did swear himself out of all suit. Dumaine was at my service and his sword. No point, quoth I. <laughs> my servant straight was mute. <laughs> Lord Longueville said I came o'er his heart and trow you what he called me. Quam, perhaps? Yes, yeah. <laughs> Go, sickness as thou art. Well, better wits have worn plain statute caps. But will you hear? The king is my love sworn, oh. and quick Barone hath plighted faith to me. And Longueville was for my service born. Dumaine is mine, as sure as bark on tree. <laughs> Madam and pretty mistresses, <laughs> give ear. Immediately they will again be here in their own shapes, for it can never be they will digest this harsh indignity. Will they return? They will, they will, God knows, and leap for joy, though they are lame with blows. Therefore, change favours, and when they repair, blow like sweet roses in this summer. Air. How blow, how blow, speak to be understood. Fair ladies, masked are roses in their bud, dismasked, their damask sweet commixture shown, are angels veiling clouds or roses blown. A vaunt perplexity. What shall we do if they return in their own shapes to woo? Good madam, if by me you'll be advised, let's mock them still, as well known as disguised. <laughs> Let us complain to them what fools were here, disguised like muscovites in shapeless fear, and wonder what they were and to what end their shallow shows and prologue vilely penned and their rough carriage so ridiculous should be presented at our tent to us. Ladies withdraw, the gallants are at hand. Women who are tents as roads run all the land. <laughs> Fair sir, God save you, where's the princess? Uh, gone to her tent. Uh, please it, your majesty, command me any service to her thither. That she vouchsafe me audience for one word. I will, and so will she, I know, my lord. This fellow pecks up wit as pigeons peas, and utters it again when God doth please. He is wit's peddler, and retails his wares at wakes and wassails, meetings, markets, fairs. <laughs> and we that sell by gross, the lord doth know, have not the grace to grace it with such show. <laughs> this gallant pins the wenches on his sleeve. Had he been Adam, he had tempted Eve. A concave, too, and lisp. Why, this is he that kissed his hand away in courtesy. This is the ape of form, Monsieur the Nice, that when he plays at tables, chides the dice in honourable terms. Nay, he can sing a mean most meanly, and in ushering mend him who can. The ladies call him sweet. The stairs, as he treads on them, kiss his feet. This is the flower that smiles on everyone, to show his teeth as white as whale his bone. And consciences that will not die in debt pay him the due of honey-tongued boyette. A blister on his sweet tongue with my heart that put Amado's page out of his path. See where it comes. Behaviour, what wert thou till this madman showed thee, and what art thou now? All hail, sweet madam, and fair time of day. Fair in all hail is foul, as I conceive. Construe my speeches better, if you may. Then wish me better. I will give you leave. We came to visit you, and purpose now to lead you to our court. Vouchsafe it then. This field shall hold me, and so hold your vow. Nor God nor I delights in perjured men. Rebuke me not for that which you provoke. The virtue of your eye must break my oath. You nickname virtue. Vice you should have spoke. For virtue's office never breaks men's troth. Now, by my maiden honour, yet as pure as the unsullied lily, I protest, a world of torments though I should endure, I would not yield to be your house's guest. So much I hate a breaking cause to be of heavenly oaths vowed with integrity. Oh, you have lived in desolation here, unseen, unvisited, much to our shame. Not so, my lord. It is not so, I swear. We have had pastimes here and pleasant game. A mess of Russians left us but of late. <laughs> How, madam? Russians? Aye, in truth, my lord. Trim gallants, full of courtship and of state. Oh, madam, speak true. It is not so, my lord. My lady, to the manner of the days, in courtesy gives undeserving praise. We four, indeed, confronted were with four in Russian habit. Here they stayed an hour and talked a pace, and in that hour, my lord, they did not bless us with one happy word. I dare not call them fools, but this, I think, when they are thirsty fools would fain have drink. <laughs> this jest is dry to me. My gentle sweet, your wit makes wise things foolish. When we greet with eyes best seeing heaven's fiery eye, by light we lose light. 
Your capacity is of that nature that to your huge store, wise things seem foolish and rich things but poor. This proves you wise and rich, for in my eye... I am a fool and full of poverty. But that you take what doth to you belong, it were a fault to snatch words from my tongue. Oh, I am yours and all that I possess. All the fool mine? I cannot give you less. Which of the visors was it that you wore? Where? When? What visor? Why demand you this? There, then, that visor, that superfluous case that hid the worse and showed the better face. We were descried. They'll mock us now, darling. Right. right. Let us confess and turn it to a jest. Amazed, my lord. Why looks your highness sad? Help! Hold his brows. He'll swoon. Why look you pale? Seasick, I think, coming from Muscovy. <laughs> <laughs> Thus pour the stars down plagues for perjury. Can any face of brass hold longer out? Here stand I, lady, dart thy skill at me, bruise me with scorn, confound me with a flout, thrust thy sharp wit quite through my ignorance, cut me to pieces with thy keen conceit. And I will wish thee never more to dance, nor never more in Russian habit wait. Oh, never will I trust to speeches penned, nor to the motion of a schoolboy's tongue, nor never come in visor to my friend, nor woo in rhyme like a blind harper's song. Taffeta phrases, silken terms precise, three piled hyperboles, peruse affection, figures pedantical. These summer flies have blown me full of maggot ostentation. I do forswear them, and I here protest by this white glove I'll wipe the hand, God knows. Henceforth, my wooing mind shall be expressed in russet yeas and honest cursy noes. And to begin, wench, so God help me, law, my love to thee is sound, sans crack or flaw. Sans, sans, I pray you. Yet I have a trick of the old rage. Bear with me, I am sick. I'll leave it by degrees. Soft, let us see. Right, Lord have mercy on us on those three. They are infected in their hearts, it lies. They have the plague and caught it of your eyes. These lords are visited. You are not free, for the Lord's tokens on you, do I see? No, they are free that gave these tokens to us. Our states are forfeit, seek not to undo us. It is not so, for how can this be true, that you stand forfeit, being those that sue? Peace, for I will not have to do with you. Nor shall not, if I do as I intend. Speak for yourselves, my wit is at an end. Teach us, sweet madam, for our rude transgression, some fair excuse. The fairest is confession. Uh, were not you here, but even now, disguised? Madam, I was. And were you well advised? I was, fair madam. When you then were here, what did you whisper in your lady's ear? That more than all the world I did respect her. When she shall challenge this, you will reject her. Upon mine honour, no. Peace, peace, forbear. Your oath once broke, you force not to forswear. Despise me when I break this oath of mine. I will, and therefore keep it. Rosaline, what did the Russian whisper in your ear? Madam, he swore that he did hold me dear as precious eyesight, and did value me above this world, adding thereto, moreover, that he would wed me. Or else die, my lover. God give thee joy of him. The noble lord most honourably doth uphold his word. What mean you, madam? By my life, my truth, I never swore this lady such an oath. By heaven you did. And to confirm it plain, you gave me this. But take it, sir, again. My faith in this, the princess I did give. I knew her by this jewel on her sleeve. Pardon me, sir. This jewel did she wear. And Lord Barone, I thank him, is my dear. What, will you have me or your pearl again? <laughs> Neither of either. I remit both twain. I see the trick, aunt. <laughs> Here was a consent, knowing aforehand of our merriment, to dash it like a Christmas comedy. Some carry tale, some please man, some slight zany, some mumble news, some trencher night, some dick that smiles his cheek and ears and knows the trick to make my lady laugh when she's disposed, told our intents before, which once disclosed, the ladies did change favours, and then we, following the signs, wooed but the sign of she. Now to our perjury, to add more terror, we are again forsworn in will and error. Much upon this tis. And might not you, sir, mm. forestall our sport to make us thus untrue? Do not you know my lady's foot by the square, and laugh upon the apple of her eye, and stand between her back, sir, and the fire, holding a trencher, jesting merrily? You put our page out. Go, you are allowed. Die when you will, a smock shall be your shroud. You leer upon me, do you? There's an eye, wounds like a leaden sword. <laughs> Full merrily hath this brave managed this career been run. Lo, he is tilting straight. Peace, I have done. Sir, welcome, pure wit, thou partest a fair prey. Our oh, Lord, sir, they would know whether the three worthies shall come in or no. What, are there but three? No, sir, but it is a very fine, for everyone percents three. 
And three times thrice is nine. Not so, sir. Under correction, sir. I hope it is not so. You cannot beg us, sir. I can assure you, sir. We know what we know. I hope, sir, three times thrice, sir, is not nine. <laughs> Under correction, sir. We know where until it doth amount. By Jove, I always took three threes for nine. <laughs> oh, Lord, sir. It would a pity you should get your living by reckoning, sir. How much is it? Oh, Lord, sir. The parties themselves, the actors, sir, will show where until it doth amount. For my own part, I am, as they say, but too perfect one man in one poor man, Pumpy and the Great, sir. Art thou one of the worthies? It pleased them to think me worthy of Pompey the Great. For mine own part, I know not the degree of the worthy, but I am to stand for him. <laughs> Go, bid them prepare. <laughs> we will turn it finally off, sir. We will take some care. Barone, they will shame us. Let them not approach. We are shame-proof, my lord, and tis some policy to have one show worse than the king's and his company. I say they shall not come. Nay, good my lord, let me all rule you now. That sport best pleases that doth least know how, where zeal strives to content, and the contents dies in the zeal of that which it presents. Their form confounded makes most form in mirth, when great things labouring perish in their birth. A right description of our sport, my lord. Anoint her. Uh -huh. I implore so much expense of thy royal sweet breath as will utter a brace of words. Ah, hmm. uh, my lord. Doth um, this man say well, God? Is, uh, Why I ask you? He speaks not like and a man of God's um, making. Let like us all one, my fair sweet honey monarch, for I protest the schoolmaster is exceeding fantastical. Too, too vain. Too, too vain. <laughs> Uh, but uh, we will put it, as they say, to Fortuna della Guerra. I wish you the peace of mind, most royal accouplement. <laughs> Here is likely to be a good presence of worthies. He presents Hector of Troy, the swain, Pompey the Great, the parish curate Alexander, Armado's page Hercules, the pedant Judas Maccabeus. And if these four worthies in their first show thrive, these four will change habits and present the other five. <laughs> there is five in the first show. You are deceived, is not, sir? The pedant, the braggart, the hedge priest, the fool, and the boy. A bait throw it and know them, and the whole world again cannot pick out five such, take each one in his vein. The ship is under <laughs> sail, and here she comes amain. <laughs> I, Pompey M. You lie, you are not he. I, Pompey M. With Libbard's head on knee. Well said, <laughs> old mocker, I must needs be friends with thee. I, Pompey M. Pompey, surnamed the Bick. The Great. It is. Great, sir. Pompey, <laughs> surnamed the Great. <laughs> that oft in field with targe and shield did make my foe to sweat, and travelling <laughs> along this coast, I here am come by chance and lie my arms before the legs of this sweet lass of France. <laughs> if your ladyship would say thanks, Pompey, I had done. Great thanks, great Pompey. <laughs> Tis not so much worth, but I hope I was perfect. I made a little fault in great. <laughs> my hat to a half penny. Pompey proves the best worthy. <laughs> 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 when in the world I lived, I was the world's commander by east, west, north, and south. I spread my conquering might. My scutcheon plain declares that I am Alexander. Your nose says no, you are not, but it stands too right. <laughs> Your nose smells no in this most tender-smelling night. Oh. The conqueror is dismayed. Proceed, good Alexander. Oh, yeah. uh, when in the world I lived, mm. I was the world's commander. Most true, it is right. You were so, Alexander. Pompey the Great. Your oh. servant and custom. Take away the conqueror. Take away Alexander. <laughs> oh, sir, you have overthrown Alexander the conqueror. Oh, you will be scraped out of the painted cloth for this. No, no, no. Your lion that holds his pollock sitting on a close stool will be given to Ajax. No, no. He will be the ninth worthy. Oh. A conqueror and a fear to speak. Run away for shame, Alexander. Oh. <laughs> 
fair. And she'll please you. A foolish man, an honest man, look you, and soon dashed. He is a marvellous good neighbour, i faith, and a very good bowler. <laughs> but for Alexander, alas, you see how tears a little all parted. <laughs> but there are worthies a coming will speak their mind in some other sort. Stand aside, good Pompey. <laughs> Great Hercules is presented by this imp, whose club killed Cerberus, that three-headed Canus, and when he was a babe, a child, a shrimp, thus did he strangle a serpent in his manus. Quoniam, <laughs> he seemeth in minority, ergo I come with this apology. <laughs> Keep some state in thy exit and vanish. <laughs> <laughs> Judas, I am. A Judas. But not Iscariot, sir. Judas, I am eclipsed Maccabeus. Judas Maccabeus clipped is plain Judas. A kissing traitor. How art thou proved, Judas? Judas, I am. The more shame for you, Judas. What mean you, sir? To make Judas hang himself. <laughs> uh, begin, sir. You are my elder. Well followed. Judas was hanged on an elder. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be put out of countenance. Because thou hast no face. What is this? A sit on head. The head of a bodkin. A death's face in a ring. <laughs> the face of an old Roman coin, scarce seen. <laughs> and now, forward, for we have put thee in countenance. You have put me out of countenance. False. We have given thee faces. But you have outfaced them all. And thou art a lion, we would do so. <laughs> Therefore, as he is an ass, let him go. And so would you, sweet Jude? Nay, why dost thou stay? For the latter end of his name. For the ass to the Jew, <laughs> give it him! <laughs> Jude, ass, away! <laughs> this is not generous. Not gentle. Not humble. Oh. A light for Monsieur Judas. It grows dark. <laughs> he may stumble. <laughs> Alas, poor Maccabeus. How hath he been baited? Hide <laughs> oh. <laughs> thy head, Achilles. Here comes Hector in arms. Though my mocks come home by me, I will now be merry. Hector was but a Trojan in respect of this. But is this Hector? I think Hector was not so clean timbered. His leg is too big for Hector. More calf, certainly. No, he is best endued in the small. This cannot be Hector. He's a god or a painter, but he makes faces. The omnipotent man of Lances the Almighty gave Hector a gift. A gilt nutmeg. A lemon stuck with cloves. No, cloven. A piece. The omnipotent man of land says the Almighty <laughs> gave Hector a gift, the heir of Ilium, a man so breathed that certain he would fight, yea, from morn till night out of his pavilion. I am that flower. That mint. That columbine. Sweet Lord Longerville, rain thy tongue. Well, I must rather give it the rain, for it runs against Hector. Aye, and Hector's a greyhound. <laughs> The sweet war man is dead and rotten. Sweet chucks beat not the bones of the buried. When he breathed, he was a man. But I will forward with my device. Sweet royalty, bestow upon me the sense of hearing. Speak, brave Hector. We are much delighted. I do adore thy sweet graces slip up. Loves her by the foot. He may not by the yard. <laughs> this Hector, far surmounted Hannibal. The party is gone. Hello, Hector. She is gone. She is two months on her way. What meanest thou? Oh, you play the honest Trojan. The poor when she's cast away, she's quick. The child brags in her belly already. Tis yours. <laughs> <laughs> Dost thou infeminize me among potentates? Thou shalt die. <laughs> then shall Hector be whipped for Jacquinetta that is quick by him and hang for Pompey that is dead by him. Most rare Pompey. Bring down it, Pompey. Greater than great, 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 great Pompey. Pompey the huge. Hector trembles. Pompey is moved. More 80s, more 80s. Stop! 
Paul Salomon. Hector will challenge him. I have no more man's blood in his belly than will suffer flee. By the North Pole, I do challenge thee. I will not fight with the pole like a northern man. I'll <laughs> slash. I'll do it by the sword. I befray you. Let me borrow my arms again. Room for the incensed worthy. <laughs> I'll do it in my shirt. Most resolute Pompey. Martha, let me take you a buttonhole lower. Do you not see Pompey's uncasing for the combat? What mean you? You will lose your reputation. Gentlemen and soldiers, pardon me. I will not not combat in my shirt. You may not deny it. Pompey has made the challenge. Sweet uh, bloods, I both may and will. What reason have you for it? The naked truth of it is that I have no shirt. I go Woolward for penance. <laughs> True. And it was enjoined in Rome for want of linen. Since when I be sworn, he wore none but a dish clout of Jacquinettas. And that wears next his heart for a favour. <laughs> God save you, madam. Welcome, Mayor Cahard, but that thou interrupt our merriment. I'm sorry, madam, for the news I bring is heavy in my tongue. The king, your father... Dead for my life. Even so. My tale is told. Worthies away, scene begins to cloud. For mine own part, I breathe free breath. I have seen the day of wrong through the little hole of discretion, and I will right myself like a soldier. How fares your majesty? Boyot, prepare. I will away tonight. Madam, not so. I do beseech you stay. Prepare, I say. I thank you, gracious lords, for all your fair endeavours, and entreat, out of a new sad soul, that you vouchsafe in your rich wisdom to excuse or hide the liberal opposition of our spirits. If over boldly we have borne ourselves in the converse of breath, your gentleness was guilty of it. Farewell, worthy lord. A heavy heart bears not a nimble tongue. Excuse me so for coming too short of thanks for my great suit so easily obtained. The extreme parts of time extremely forms all causes to the purpose of his speed, and often at his very loose decides that which long process could not arbitrate. And though the mourning brow of progeny forbid the smiling courtesy of love, the holy suit which fain it would convince, yet since love's argument was first on foot, let not the cloud of sorrow jostle it from what it purposed, since to wail friends lost is not by much so wholesome profitable as to rejoice at friends but newly found. I understand you not. My griefs are double. Honest plain words best pierce the ear of grief, and by these badges understand the king. For your fair sakes have we neglected time, played foul play with our oaths. Your beauty, ladies, hath much deformed us, fashioning our humours even to the opposed end of our intents. And what in us hath seemed ridiculous, as love is full of unbefitting strains, all wanton as a child, skipping and vain, formed by the eye, and therefore like the eye, full of strange shapes, of habits and of forms, varying in subjects, as the eye doth roll to every varied object in his glance. Which party-coated presence of loose love put on by us, if in your heavenly eyes have misbecomed our oaths and gravities, those heavenly eyes that look into these faults suggested us to make? Therefore, ladies, our love being yours, the error that love makes is likewise yours. We to ourselves prove false by being once false, for ever to be true to those that make us both, fair ladies, you. And even that falsehood in itself a sin thus purifies itself and turns to grace. We have received your letters full of love, your favours, the ambassadors of love, and in our maiden council rated them at courtship, pleasant jest and courtesy, as bombast and as lining to the time. But more devout than this in our respects have we not been, and therefore met your loves in their own fashion, like a merriment. Our letters, madam, showed much more than jest. And so did our looks. We did not quote them, sir. Now, at the latest minute of the hour, grant us your loves. A time, methinks, too short to make a world without end bargain in. No, no, my lord, your grace is perjured much, full of dear guiltiness, and therefore this. If, for my love, as there is no such cause, you will do aught, 
This shall you do for me. Your oath I will not trust, but go with speed to some forlorn and naked hermitage, remote from all the pleasures of the world. There stay until the twelve celestial signs have brought about the annual reckoning. If this austere, insociable life change not your offer made in heat of blood, if frosts and fasts, hard lodging and thin weeds nip not the gaudy blossoms of your love, but that it bear this trial and last love, then at the expiration of the year, come challenge me. Challenge me by these deserts, and by this virgin palm now kissing thine, I will be thine. Until that instant, shut my woeful self up in a mourning house, raining the tears of lamentation for the remembrance of my father's death. If this thou do deny, let our hands part, neither entitled in the other's heart. If this or more than this I would deny, to flatter up these powers of mine with rest, the sudden hand of death close up mine eye. And what to me, my love, and what to me? A wife? A beard, fair health and honesty. With threefold love I wish you all these three. Oh, shall I say I thank you, gentle wife? Not so, my lord. A twelve-month and a day, I'll mark no words that smooth-faced wooers say. Come when the king doth to my lady come. Then if I have much love, I'll give you some. I'll serve thee true and faithfully till then. Yet swear not, lest you be forsworn again. What says Maria? At the twelve months' end, I'll change my black gown for a faithful friend. I'll stay with patience, but the time is long. The like are you. You taller are so young. Studies, my lady. Mistress, look on me. Behold the window of my heart, mine eye. What humble suit attends thy answer there? Impose some service on me for thy love. Oft have I heard of you, my lord Barone, before I saw you. And the world's large tongue proclaims you for a man replete with mocks full of comparisons and wounding flouts, which you on all estates will execute that lie within the mercy of your wit. To weed this wormwood from your fruitful brain, and therewithal to win me, if you please, without the which I am not to be won. You shall this twelve-month term from day to day visit the speechless sick and still converse with groaning wretches, and your task shall be with all the fierce endeavor of your wit to enforce the painted impotent to smile to move wild laughter in the throat of death. Cannot be, it is impossible. Mirth cannot move a soul in agony. Why, that's the way to choke a jibing spirit, whose influence is begot of that loose grace which shallow laughing hearers give to fools. A jest's prosperity lies in the ear of him that hears it, never in the tongue of him that makes it. Then, if sickly ears, deft with the clamors of their own dear groans, will hear your idle scorns, continue then, and I will have you and that fault with all. But if they will not, throw away that spirit, and I shall find you empty of that fault, right joyful of your reformation. A twelve-month. Well, before what will befall, I'll jest a twelve-month in unhospital. Aye, sweet my lord, and so I take my leave. No, madam, we will bring you on your way. Our wooing doth not end like an old play. Jack hath not Jill. These ladies' courtesy might well have made our sport a comedy. Come, sir, it wants a twelve month and a day, and then twill end. That's too long for a play. The sweet majesty, vouchsafe me. Was not that Hector? The worthy knight of Troy. I will kiss thy royal finger and take my leave. I am a votary. I have vowed to Jacquinetta to hold the plough for her sweet love a three year. But most esteemed greatness, will you hear the dialogue that the two learned men have compiled in praise of the owl and the cuckoo? It should have followed at the end of our show. Call them forth quickly, we will do so. Hola, approach! Huh. This side is Hiem's winter, this there the spring, the one maintained by the owl, the other by the cuckoo. There, begin. When Davy pied and violets grew, and Lady 
his nail and the tom bears box into the hole and the milk comes frozen home in pail when blood is nipped and ways be foul then a nightly sings the staring owl to wit to a merry noise while greasy And coughing drowns the parson's soul And birds it brooding in the snow And Marion's nose looks red and raw When roasted crabs hiss in the bowl Then a nightly sings the stirring owl To its two A merry Greasy Joan and Achille the words of Mercury are harsh after the songs of Apollo. You that way, we this way. <laughs> 